This chart shows the deaths of civilians and coalition troops during the Iraq War. It was created by Simon Scar in 2011. It's one of very few charts that show data and at the same time hit you in the gut. Ten years later, this has turned into an iconic chart and it has lost none of its impact. It's still a powerful reminder how a chart can do much more than just show numbers. This is a chart appreciation. During the Iraq War from 2003 through 2013 or so, you'd see headlines like these every day. 27 people killed here, 32 there, 45 the next day. The numbers made you numb, and you just stopped caring or even just paying attention. This is why Simon Scar created this piece for the South China Morning Post. It reminded people what the abstract numbers were about, the suffering and death of over 100,000 people. It's a bar chart, but the bars point down instead of up. The color and shape of the bars make them look like blood that is dripping down the page. It's immediately clear what this data is about and what Scar wanted people to take away, even before they realized they were even looking at numbers. But as stark as it is, this is still data. You can read the numbers, you can see spikes at certain times, and you can read the annotations pointing out some of the events that led to more deaths. You can also see the dark red coalition deaths at the top in relation to the much more numerous civilian ones. And there are other annotations that help put the numbers into context, like the bubbles on the bottom showing what killed the most civilians, airstrikes, suicide bombs, executions, and so on. There's also data about coalition fatalities on the right, broken down by country and where within Iraq they were killed. This is a full-page news graphic that was made to draw you in and then allow you to learn more as you explore it further. Bars in bar charts usually point up. It's not just a convention, it's actually deeply rooted in our understanding of the world. We use spatial metaphors more than we realize, and we associate up with good. Charles Lakoff and Mark Johnson talk about this in their book, Metaphors We Live By. Up is good, down is bad. Up is high status, down is low status. Up is virtuous, down is depraved, as they put it here. Because of that, bars pointing down are a powerful way to make you pay attention and to tell you that what's being shown is bad. Financial crises are bad, so a chart comparing them might have bars pointing down. The loss of glaciers is bad, so they get these triangular bars pointing down. Executions are bad, so the bars representing them in this chart point down. While not as stark as the Iraq chart at first glance, this one has its own way of getting to you with the choice of scale. It really drives home the difference in the number of executions in Iran and China compared to the rest of the world. Bars can also point down to show you that things are getting better. This chart shows the number of jobs lost every month during the financial crisis in the last year or so of the George W. Bush administration and the first year of Barack Obama being president. There's a clear message here. Things were getting worse under Bush, and now they're getting better under Obama. Now you can argue, of course, that Obama probably didn't have such an immediate impact, but the intent of the chart is to show that he did. These bars have to point down for this to make sense. If they point up instead, it would look like something was getting better under Bush, and now it's getting worse. Who wants less of something? Of course, in this case, these are job losses, and fewer jobs lost is better, but also up is better, so this sends a confusing message. The bars seem to contradict the numbers. A new paper by Greg Wooden, Bodo Winter, and Les Padilla reports on a pair of studies where they looked at what they call emotional valence in charts. This is simply a fancy term for whether something seems good or bad, and they looked at how well people were able to read charts pointing up or down, depending on whether they matched that emotional valence or not. They studied line charts instead of bars, but they took inspiration from Scar's chart, as you can see here. They found that people had more trouble reading charts with an axis pointing down. But they also found that when charts matched the emotional valence of the data, meaning they pointed up for good and down for bad, people did better. They put in a very academic and understated way here, but their results clearly show the value of charts matching the metaphor and pointing up or down accordingly. This doesn't always work, though. Christine Chang created this chart about gun deaths in Florida in 2014. 
She was clearly inspired by Scar's piece here and tried to do something similar. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work and she got a lot of abuse online over it. It is still used as an example of lying with visualization, but that is simply wrong. The chart didn't work as intended and that's unfortunate, but it does not deserve the scorn and Chan did not deserve the abuse. I think you can see what happened here. After having seen all these downward pointing charts now, you might immediately read it as intended. The red part is the data. But many people coming to it without that context saw the white part as the data. And that is understandable because charts pointing down are unusual and the cues that would tell you which part is the foreground and which the background are ambiguous. The two different readings give you completely opposite messages though. One shows gun deaths dropping after that law was passed, while the correct one would show them increasing. This is not lying with data though. The charts failed to convey its message, but there was no intent to lie. That's pretty obvious if you look at the context here. It does serve as a cautionary tale though that using unusual charts, like the inverted axis here, has to be done with care to make sure people don't misread them. I know exactly when I first saw Scar's Iraq chart, because I took a picture of it with my iPhone 4. This was March 18, 2012 at the Melofi Awards, which is like the Pulitzer Prizes for news graphics. I still remember this visceral reaction I had to the piece, especially seeing it in print in its full size. I was on the jury that year and we ended up awarding it a silver medal even though I argued for gold. I should have pushed harder, it clearly deserved more. Simon Scar's Iraq chart is a bar chart in the end, but it has become iconic because of the choices Scar made. He could have chosen a different color scheme. He could have chosen to make the bars point up. He could have made yet another bar chart that you look at and soon forget. But he didn't. And that's what makes it endure. It's an amazing example of how relatively simple decisions can make an enormous difference in the impact of a chart. When it's done right, even a simple bar chart can hurt. I've included links to the charts you saw in this video and some other materials in the description below. Please check those out. And let me know what you think about this chart or any others I should cover. Thanks for watching and take care.